Here it has advanced. Let's watch. Watching. All right. Where's he going to put his stuff? Only seven, seven. in Central Yakut. Is he doing the seven five? No, he We're, didn't. We do... didn't see the five. He what? didn't use the card. He didn't use the card. Neither of them used the card. What the heck are they even doing? I. So confused. He captured Jin Jang and just sat. Okay, okay. Uh, so the. Huh? They must have lost another card somewhere. Or maybe they did wanted to save it for some reason. I approve of this situation. Uh, yeah, I think that we are probably in a winning position right now. Yeah, I, I'd that, say so. That, was, that went much better than expected. That went splendidly. Yeah. Remarkably well, sir. <laughs> yep. Okay, so uh, the only risk is that they now have a card right now. <laughs> Which means I can't break him in Brazil. Okay, that's fine. Just go to Bolivia. Just go to... Just try and, like, go to Bolivia. I mean... And, and just watch him ram into you in Congo. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well... <sighs> no, I don't want to do that. Why? Because if if he just puts guys down in subtropical Brazil, he's not going to hit Congo. He would only hit Congo if he put everything there and hit it. Okay, yeah. In which case, I should attack subtropical Brazil. Well, just hit it. With, you can hit everything with twos except Bolivia. Hit that with most everything. You can well, literally I can't do, that do with whatever what I have you now. want. I need to put income there. So? Just a few. You don't need to put much. Uruguay, subtropical Brazil, Paraguay, twos. Do I really care about Uruguay? Well, or it, Paraguay? It's really just an issue of, I mean, if he lets you take it, take it. <laughs> that that's the issue. That's yeah, all it I is. Guess, I guess, yeah. I mean, he probably would not <laughs> sell him South America right now. He has other problems. Oh yeah, they really have bigger issues at hand. Um, which is exactly why just give what, just take what they give you. All right. If your opponents screw up, take it and run with it. Just win. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, you have a slight possibility of going for Siberia if you want, although it's exceedingly unlikely. <laughs> and okay. Uh... East China is safe. Which is hilarious. Which How? Is awesome. This the, is the most The fact that they thing. allowed this to happen is huge. Yeah. Because uh, it means you don't need to worry about defense. You just go and kill. They can't even pressure for West China. They could technically pressure for Siberia, but that's unlikely to happen in this situation. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. <laughs> if they have a card, who would use it? It's really hard to predict. <laughs> they both need it. They both need it. Exactly. I think they... I would not be surprised if they just surrendered now. Uh, they're in a really bad position. That's Because... That's totally I mean, true. I'm not saying they need to. I don't think they are, all, they are dead quite yet. But... It depends how they use the card. The yeah. fact that they didn't use it last turn... I... We'll have to figure out where they lost that extra card piece. When, when After the game, we'll figure out where they lost that card piece. Because mm -hmm. that, that really hurt them. Yeah, whatever happened. I don't know what it was, but this is, this is really bad. Yeah. This is ugly. I'm not even think. I'm thinking of honestly not even placing anything in Cheetah. I'm just thinking of like. You don't oh, want to play I love in it. Cheetah? No. To be honest, I don't. Excuse me, because he could defend it if the, if he did use the card. So I'm I'm just I'm yeah. playing, assuming that he will use the card. I think it's wise you if you go do as well. For, uh, Siberia. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, uh, don't, don't. It's not really. Way too greedy. Yeah. Not really. I do plan on transferring into Beratia, though. Yeah, you've had uh, you've had a dog scratching at your door for a good bit. Chirk, chirk. Um, I'm thinking of placing stuff in Tamer and naming Goo. Did you hear me? No. What? Thinking of placing stuff in Tamir and Namingu. How many in each? Four, four? Uh, yeah, basically. I could go a little less. Hmm. Another um, possibility would be putting guys in Namingu and hitting Kabarovsk. I could see that, but I don't think I need to, to be honest. I think I'll be able to get away with this. Okay. I think what he's most likely to do is uh, will give me an opening somewhere. I mean, if it doesn't, then I still think I'm okay, so I don't mind. Uh, I don't. The thing is, I don't. I think your position is so good. I don't even need to win the game this turn. I'm basically just gonna take whatever openings he gives me, if he gives me an op any openings at all. If he doesn't give me any openings, then whatever. Yeah. I don't think it's a big deal as long as I have the potential to create new openings next turn. I like your moves. Just placing a few in Congo. Mm -hmm. All right. Coolio. I don't really need those guys in Congo, but I'll still have enough in Bo in Bolivia to overcome his nine income. Mm. So I think that it's the point. There's no reason not to put two guys in Congo. Mm. It'll take pretty much all my income in Bolivia next turn to make sure I overcome him. But that's in the event where he just attacks me in Central Africa this turn, then you know I probably break it. I probably finish South Southern South America, in which case I have eleven income or twelve income, and he's just screwed. Mm-hmm. Screwed is as screwed gets. All right. Yep. And I'm just going to hit a mur there. You know, let's do that as well. And that. Yeah. These are very yeah. random seeming moves. I'll show you them. You can admire. It's a work of art. <laughs> yep. I hate attacking my own color, though. So you got to show who the true blue is. <laughs> I am the true blue. <laughs> 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 Take that, Robert E. Lee. <laughs> I am the true blue. Mm -hmm. Wait. Wait, what? Why Why would Robert E. Lee be blue now that I think about it? Yeah. That's yeah. a bad color to choose he's if your name's he's, Robert he's E. Lee. <laughs> Blue's a Yankee color. You're supposed to... Yep. If, if, you, if your name's Robert E. Lee, you at least gotta stay in the same role. I mean, you gotta... Red would be a better color. Red or gray? <laughs> Don't choose yeah. blue. That's like the most anti-rebel color. Well, the anti-confederate color, I guess. No, you know, I actually yeah, yeah. can't say that because I saw a CGP Grey video where uh, the actual like first flag of the confederacy was the Bonnie Blue. So actually, that's a bad thing for me to say. <laughs> it was well, blue at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Nonetheless, we're in a pretty good position right now. And we'll see what happens when Turin advances. Indeed we shall. And Turin has advanced. Yes, it has. Would you like to watch the turn? I'm thinking watching is good. Yeah, okay, let's go. All right. <laughs> and split. Defended Uruguay. Yeah, to the right, though, you may, noticed, you may have noticed they have surrendered. He didn't defend subtropical Brazil, so... Mm-hmm. That explains it. Or at least part of it. I guess their moves in uh you Asia moved didn't go. Back to St. Helena. Okay, that's understandable. Huh. Okay. Oh, oh. He attacked me. <laughs> Well, he's lucky he did it after you hit Uruguay though. Mm-hmm. If it had been the other way around. 
you would have taken it. Looks like you tried some one hits. Robert E. Lee, that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really nothing changed all that major in Asia. <laughs> oh, well, it does look good for me in a certain way. Now I have, now I don't have a stack to worry about in Central Yakut Plain, uh, but let's just accept their surrenders. I think it was relatively hopeless for them. Well, because considering point. I broke Brazil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. If he had perfectly defended that, like put one guy in subtropical Brazil or something. Mm -hmm. Then they'd still then, have a chance. Then they would have. They would have waited well, another turn at least. They would have. Yeah, they would have had another turn. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't think Robert E. Lee would have as easy a time defending Yakusha this turn as he did the other turn, because last turn he had a card and uh, two stacks to work with that were already sort of there. Or did he have actually two stacks? Am I wrong? I think he just had one, actually. Yeah, he just had eight in Central Yakut Plain. But that plus the card gave him um, 19 guys to work with. Yeah. So he had enough to defend for one turn. Unfortunately, he couldn't... Or unfortunately for him, fortunately for me, he couldn't <laughs> do... Anything like eliminate me from naming Goo or mm -hmm. or Kutsk, yeah. Tamir, and Beresha to get all of Siberia. He didn't do anything of that like that. So with nothing really big like that happening, I have a much better chance of taking Yakusha this turn than I did last turn. Yep, and really we would probably be in a position where you could gift me something over there by this point. That's true as well. Yeah, I could... I would probably end up gifting you something like, I don't know, I could place enough in naming you and gift you that. I could place enough in just about wherever I want. Yeah. And gift you a spot. And Because, I mean, you don't need to worry about Be Cool very much anymore, do you? He's down yeah. to five income, and now he'll slowly dwindle down and die. <laughs> so anyway, GG, guys. That was a good game. Yep. Okay, let's go through the history. Or heck, Wait. I guess I could gift you, like... I, well, nah, I think it would be better to gift you a spot in Asia. I was thinking about uh, Italy. Like Italy. <laughs> and then you could just take... All of Europe or something. No, that would be too slow. Yeah, I agree. I think it would still be better to work on Africa with what you've got. And just let... I'll, I'll just gift you a spot in Asia. Yeah. Either way. All right. Yep. So, their picks. Uh, looking at Robert E. Lee, he comboed into Europe with 3-4 uh -huh. around Yakusha. So, he got hit. He ended up with his 1-3. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. And then sense. Be Cool went comboed Brazil. As expected. Uh, well, as we knew, yes. So he just got his 1-2 and had no knowledge. He he, All of his first six were over around co sort of combos. Like it's 3-4 combo South Pacific, but I think that's mainly as a medium-term counter towards... Well, we didn't know that he was in... Brazil. Okay. We just made an educated we, guess. Yeah, it was an educated guess. Yeah, that's what I mean to say. So okay. anyway. Yeah, going to uh, the first turn. Uh, yeah, as expected. Okay, well, we will be able to tell the exact situation that happened with Robert E. Lee's expansion. <laughs> True. So he did win the three, but he had maximum losses. Ah. Uh, And then next turn, he just placed everything, I guess, to intimidate <laughs> me or something? I guess. And then the turn after, he attacked with a 3 and a 2. He went yeah. for the 12% chance. <laughs> well, yeah, a little less than that, because you've also got an 80% chance on the other side. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, a 9.5% chance or something, taking the whole thing. Yeah, there we if go. If it had worked out, that would have been fantastic for him. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. 
Uh, unfortunately for him, it didn't. And did he... He only lost one, so he was still able to place one to finish it the next turn. Yes. Hmm. And yeah. then we looking at hmm. Be Cool, we see him... It's a little bit confusing why he still decided to attack South Gunnarsar with three. Yeah, I'm starting to think that that's just what they do. Honestly. Just because... I, mean, I, I can understand, you do have an 80% chance of success, but still, that's a 20% risk that he didn't need to take. Yeah. I guess he was really thinking that someone was in Central Africa or something. I guess. I, was, I mean, I guess he could have thought you were there and you were going to go to St. Helena or that turn or something. I don't know. I mean, what? Yeah. I don't know why you have to dedicate one additional guy there to St. Helena. Mm. I don't know. doesn't make sense to me, but hey. Well, anyways, uh, Robert Ely finishes Yakusha, starts working in Siberia. He was willing to take the risk. That's what matters, and it... Well, actually, that doesn't matter at all, because you still <laughs> he still would have failed to hit you. Yeah. Okay, and then they did do the correct move with the blockade. It was really as good as they could have done. Yeah. There wasn't much else they could do, honestly. Mm -hmm. Just thinking back, you know, a possible thing that they could have done. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is... There's no real advantage to it at the time, but when he was taking over Southern South America... He hit both Uruguay and Bolivia with threes. If he had hit those with fours, mm -hmm. he could have had extra leftovers in North Kona Sur the next turn, so his blockade would have been larger. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you can't expect a guy <laughs> know, to think that far that, ahead. It's like something like that. He was he was more concerned about Central Africa than he was about Southern Africa, which yeah. is you know pretty reasonable. Usually you don't expect someone to combo a four bonus specifically to counter your combo of a four bonus. Normally. Normally. But this yeah. is the exception. <laughs> uh, yeah. It... But if, if for some reason he decided, <laughs> I want to guarantee this bonus, then that might, it would have worked out better for him. Yes, it would have because he would have had more guys, more leftovers in the area to make that blockade bigger. Yeah. And then it would have been much harder for you to get to Brazil. Although I still think you clearly would have had an advantage. You just bring your guys back from South Kona Sur, and all of a sudden your stack is bigger. And then the next turn they lost first move. I got into Congo before he could. Yeah. Which, you know, if that had gone the other way, then this probably would have been their win. Possibly. So, I but, think that I was mean... probably the... Uh, but looking at this, huh, um, we got the first two moves. Yeah. Huh. I guess it really has changed. I guess the move orders really have changed. That just seems weird to me. It doesn't seem right somehow that one team can have both players get first move. Yeah. Well, that's random. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so then he does go up to Chad in order to counter East Africa. Then he realizes I don't have it, so he runs back. <laughs> so, yeah. And then that's when you meet the other guy, Robert E. Lee and Yakusha in Siberia. Well, actually, that's when you finished West China. Yeah, uh, turn eight, yes. That is when he moved back to Equatorial States. And I uh, got all of West China. Mm -hmm. And then turn nine. I loved that move to take West China, too. I like it. Ended up, ended up working out okay. He totally didn't expect it, I guess. I guess, I mean, I don't... Uh... I feel like he should have hit with something, but... Okay. Whatever. 
He was just being defensive that turn. And then he was like, oh crap, I have to go offensive. And then he attacks <laughs> in, and you just go into Mongolia. Honestly, I feel like he played this pretty badly. Just saying. What do you think he should have done? Well, I mean, ba well, the two big moves I could see that are likely are I could go for West China, or I could go to Mongolia. This doesn't counter either of them. I mean, it just sort of like, I mean, either way, you're in a bad position. If I have a stack in Mongolia, he's still in trouble. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, the thing is, though, he was kind of forced on the defensive because you had the initiative. It's like you were able to choose what happened. And he knew he had an income lead, at, so he wanted you to just run into a stack in Yakusha and oh. die. I don't... I, mm. That's probably what he was hoping. Well, that's definitely what he was hoping, but that seems like an unrealistic hope. <laughs> I just, just saying, I mean... I don't know. I, I, ha I have less income. Why do you think I'm just going to run into this one spot in a mer? Really? Really? I mean, isn't that obvious? Like, I'm not going to do that? Well, it, that it, it's... Or uh, that's clearly it not a good move back. for me. Well, <laughs> they didn't know that we knew that he had Siberia. Oh, well, that's true, too. That is true as well. But we made educated guesses and came to the correct conclusion. Yeah. Okay. And then after you get to Mongolia, you end up going to Bureisha, just barely somehow not losing East China and also preventing him from finishing West China. I didn't even... <laughs> yeah, it's... This uh... turn worked out very unusually. Uh, which turn are you talking about? Turn 10. Turn 10, yes. Yep. Are you talking about on my side of things? Yeah. Where I got into Beratia. Well, nothing really that interesting happened in my side. It's just, it's like he he focused too much in Mongolia because he wanted to get West China and he wanted to break your bonus. But he also wanted to have a stack in Mongolia. <laughs> if he had only gone for two out of those three things, he probably would have succeeded. He got too greedy. Yeah. Name of the game. Bit. Try and go for everything, get nothing. Well, he still got a stack in Mongolia, so. <laughs> well, uh, it still well, seems like nothing if I get into Siberia. And it's like after that, he stopped really focusing on potentially breaking your bonus. For some reason. He was too focused on killing you in Siberia and didn't break into your bonus. If he had been able to hit, uh, hit you down to five income, he would have had a much easier time overall. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't do that. It seemed like an... I thought I was going to get broken. I just sort of took it for granted. I put, like, this minimal little defense there just in case he didn't break it. And sure enough, he didn't. <laughs> but I I honestly didn't think that he would let me keep it. Just because it seems like, well, you've got a triple border. You can hit East China from literally anywhere you want. Shouldn't yeah. you do that? Besides with, like, two guys, that's all he hit it with. <laughs> I mean, that was obviously going to fail. Or, well, there's a chance I would, you know, would leave them both open. But still, I mean, it it's too small. You might as well put a few more, I don't know. Just make more of an effort to break East China. Because I wasn't even bordering Yakusha at the time. If he would have just made an effort to break East China, then I think he would have done it. And if he would have done it, then it would have been a lot harder for me to keep him broken in Siberia. I mean, yeah, I still could, you know, threaten Yakusha, but especially that turn where he had a card last turn, that would have been a lot tougher. Just ugh, trying to deal with... 12 income and I've only got five <laughs> uh 
That that's much harder. And a little bit after that, turn twelve, that was winter where I finally broke into North Gunner, sir. That was a uh, long time coming. <laughs> yeah, really. So that blockade was on turn five, and it was turn twelve when I finally broke it. So that took seven turns. Yep. It so... worked out, I guess. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. You could have moved it back in three one two, three, four turns. Yeah. Uh, so you would have had it back by turn nine. six, seven, oh. eight, nine. Ten. Or ten, whatever. Yep, so it would have showed up down there. It really wouldn't have been all that useful, though. I mean, we would have just been stalemating in Africa, hitting stuff with smaller amounts. <laughs> you would have had... A larger stack, you basically would have had instead of thirty six at the end of turn mm. ten, you would have had what I might have done instead of forty four in Tanzania is bring that those guys from instead of bringing them to Congo, bring them straight to Tanzania, and then use them to push up through East Africa while my main stack is in Congo. I I guess you could have done that I, and like I caught him off guard. I would have just been able to pressure him into me potentially getting East Africa. So he might have had to move his main stack. And we, I don't know, we could have tried getting, you know, first move to make him run back into me or something. I don't know. <laughs> we could have tried that, but generally I think the Tanzania blockade was a really good move. Because once you have Congo and you've got Tanzania blockaded, I mean, what's he going to do? It basically yeah. just becomes a stalemate where, especially if the North Kono Sur blockade was larger, you just sit there and stare at each other because neither one of you wants to move from Congo or Equatorial States. Yeah. I mean, he can sort of... Honestly, I feel... Uh, well, never mind. Uh, he can sort of risk moving to e Central African Republics, but I don't agree with that, to be honest. I think he should just stick, stick to Central African... I mean, sorry, to Equatorial States. It's just... it. There's less risk involved. If you start moving to Central African Republics, your opponent can just get a lucky two move in and then get another move into St. Helena, and, well, they've got an opportunity to get hit Brazil. I mean, there's no need to let them have that. Yeah. So just stay in equatorial states. But, I mean, there's no way you're getting through Congo because your opponent's not going to be stupid enough to move <laughs> this whole huge stack anywhere. But anyway... <laughs> that would have been an interesting well would have been a less interesting game <laughs> well it would have basically reduced down to me versus Robert E. Lee over here yeah we might have ended up trying a potential gift somewhere to see if I can just put one turn of income over there to turn the tide somehow mm -hmm. you know we would have been considering a lot of other possibilities yeah yeah, so there would have been additional things. If the blockade in North Kono Sur was bigger, it would have changed the game a lot. All right. It would have basically meant uh, we can't we can't use that number one. You can bring those guys back. Your stack will be bigger, meaning you have more guys to spare elsewhere, meaning a gift is actually reasonably mm -hmm. worthwhile. Uh, yep, or... Hmm there would have been also the slight possibility of the turn that those guys got there. If we could have coincided that with a reinforcement card, then I could have tried pounding his stack down. This is true as well. So there, that possibility would have been there. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go through the turn specifically for that, but <laughs> it's possible that that could have been a thing that we would have at least talked about. Yeah. You know, we may have favored a gift card over it because really just... Depending on what other territories he had, you know, it still would have been risky for me to move out of Congo. Mm -hmm. And that might have been too big of a risk. So, gift card might have been a safer play still. Maybe. Yeah, I, it it really depends. We, we judge the situation as we see it, depending on how things look in West China, Siberia, Yakutia, East China. Yep. Um, I feel like the way we played changed a lot because of North Kono Sur being small, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
just it, it really was. gave us an ace up our sleeve of basically the whole game where we were just waiting for that opportunity to bust that thing down and then then we win yeah, exactly and that's basically how it ended up okay. so i'm glad we planned that out right <laughs> yeah yeah i will there's other possibilities. For example, we knew that they were likely going to blockade that turn before mm -hmm. they even blockaded. We we're like, this is the correct play that they would do. Yeah. If what what we could have done that turn is just not put anything there and only focus in Africa, it would have mm -hmm. given us a head start over there, and I might have ended up finishing East Africa and been able to really pressure a stack over there. So that would have been another potential alternative, you know, reality for the game. True, but you know, every game is like that. Though there's all kinds of things that might have happened, or if this had happened differently, then it could have played out totally different. Yeah, uh, but I see what you're talking about. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, we were considering at the time. I remember thinking about that. It was like, which would be better? Because would yeah. it be better to? But we saw the opportunity that we would knock it down to basically nothing. Yeah, to where it would be 10 guys, although there was a chance. I mean, we did look at it, and there was a chance you hitting with 16 that you would only kill 9 instead of 10, and that would make it 15, which would require yeah. an additional turn of income. Which but at that it... time, we didn't realize that he was already going into Central Africa. He was farther into Central Africa than we figured at the, at the time. Yeah, well, I think that... We, we realized that the next turn. Well, yeah, we we looked at it. Uh, we we thought there was a chance he could have hit Saint Helena with something small, but it wouldn't be enough to really cause us to worry in Congo. That was the issue. We were thinking he could have taken Saint Helena, but he wouldn't have enough to take in, take Equatorial States unless he placed everything in unless he didn't place everything in North Kono Sur. That yeah. was what we were thinking at the time, uh, but. Then we looked back on, at it the next turn, and we were like, oh, well, actually, he could totally have plenty of guys right now. Yeah. And that turned out to be the case. So I'm glad we tried and hit Congo first move. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm glad we actually got that in, because if we didn't, then, well, it would have been a much harder game, to say the least. Yeah. Okay. Well... <laughs> GG, Robert E. Lee, and be cool. GG. We'll see what happens when the next game begins. Indeed.